People among us again and it's time to rip off the retro heads again with another episode of three random games right then the first game is bionic commando on the nes and um, this game came out in 1988 and it was developed by capcom it was based on a japanese arcade game and um the japanese famicom game um hitler's resurrection so it's got a bit of a funny story already obviously all kinds of nazi imagery was removed from um the bionic commando like release Obviously, Nintendo didn't, you know, think too highly of swastikas. Um, but funnily enough, what they did is instead of changing the, they changed the bad guy's name, so they changed him to um, Master D, obviously instead of Adolf Hitler. But um, the guy still bears an uncanny resemblance to Adolf Hitler. Um, at the end of the game, when you actually defeat the game, like beat the game, um, defeat the the boss, um, Master D, um, his his head just explodes in this fantastic, gory animation, and it looks exactly like Adolf Hitler. Now, as far as storyline goes, you're Nathan Rad Spencer. Rad Spencer, I love that middle name. It's so like 80s and 90s cheese. Rad, I absolutely love it. Um, and basically, like the title suggests, you're a bionic commando. Um, what this game is, it's a side, well, it's, it's mainly a side-scrolling platforming game. Um, but the first thing you'll notice when you play this game is there is no jump button, which straight away when you're playing a like a platforming game you think where the hell's the jump button but to navigate the levels and um, you know to to get yourself over gaps and stuff you've you've got um your bionic arm which um is basically like a retract retractable um like hook and rope so you know you'll you can you can fire it so far and it'll latch onto something and, and drag you over there and um this just adds like a a really fun dimension to the game do you know what i mean there's a, there's a lot of strategy about planning where you want your um where you want your hook and your grappling to, to land and take you so you know you can avoid enemy fire or, you know instantly be ducking from the enemy fire and stuff so you know it's it's it stands out i mean it's got a, obviously the 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 background about the whole hitler's resurrection thing it's fascinating but um the game's fascinating to play alone just for the simple fact that it has no jump mechanic um and you've got to navigate the levels with your grappling hook now I said it's a side scroller, but there are multiple um like game types. C certain points in the game, you'll um between level to level, you'll um you'll bump into a helicopter, and what this will do is it'll send you into like a, a top down shooter kind of mode, um very similar to like Akari Warriors and stuff like that, where um you know you're you're going up up the screen um from a top down perspective, um obviously you're shooting enemies as you go and avoiding their fire. So that kind of breaks up the we're well, not that there's any monotony, but it just kind of breaks up the gameplay. Now the levels are um very vast and very maze-like. Um there's multiple levels and multiple pathways to to each um goal and objective, uh, multiple objectives in each level as well. So there's there's lots of time to explore um these maze-like levels um, and lots of opportunities to replay the game, a lot of replayability in this game. Um, obviously, because you can go different routes and do different levels. Um, you know, some levels might suit you better. Other levels, you know, you might find a bit difficult because you know you haven't mastered that kind, that part of the game mechanic or whatever. But you know, the, there's always different ways to do things and um, different ways to go about things as far as like doing doing levels in different orders and stuff. So a lot of replayability as well. I'm that's Bionic Commando. Um, a really good game, really tight controls, great music. Um, the graphics are pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't say they're fantastic, but I mean, the game came out in 88 and um, the cutscene graphics are, are quite good. Um, obviously, I mentioned um, Master D, not Hitler's um, exploding head. Um, but the, the in-game graphics are not top-notch, you know, but that they're, they're, they're very representative of what they're supposed to be. But overall, um, I really like Bionic Commando. It's a game um, I never played when I had my original NES back in the day. And um, when I started emulating games, bad word, um, in the early 2000s, and um, I, I did that to play the Final Fantasy games, the original Final Fantasy games, and I bumped into Bionic Commando. And um, obviously when I started collecting again, it was a game that I was definitely looking for. So yeah, Bionic Commando from Capcom. Okay, then next up we've got Krusty Super Fun House on the Super Nintendo. This game came out on so many different consoles. Um, it got an NES version, 
um, Sega Master System, Sega Mega Drive, Game Gear, Game Boy, um, it had a DOS release and it, it even had an Amiga port that was supposed to come out but it was cancelled. Um, it was published by Acclaim, Acclaim had the rights to the Simpsons games for a long time um, and they didn't really do um, the series much much justice. The Simpsons games were renowned um, in the 8-bit and 16-bit generations for being really pretty crap. Um, Bart vs. the Space Mutants, I absolutely hate that game. Um, I hated it as a kid on the Amiga and I hate it now on the NES. Um, but this breaks the mold. It's actually a good Simpsons game. Um, it's not like a it's it's not like a side scrolling platformer, it's a it's a puzzle game basically. So it's quite simplified, but in short bursts it can be loads and loads of fun. Basically, you're Krusty the Clown, um, and you're in your fun house, and you've got a rat infestation, and you've kind of got to navigate your like the rats to a certain point of um of the level to to exterminate them. Basically, um, very much similar to Lemons, you know, like you'll kind of move things in the environment and you know do different things to kind of get the get them to their destination but ultimately you're not saving them like in lemons that um, they're going to be exterminated usually by another simpsons character i think bart simpsons in there homer simpsons in there and sideshow mel shows up as well um you know working these um extermination machines so you know you get quite a few cast members as well um like i say it's a puzzle game so good in short bursts it's it's quite simple it's not difficult but it just it it looks and feels like it's part of the Simpsons universe, which a lot of the games up to this point when this came out, they just they really didn't feel like they did that. So yeah, it's Krusty Super Fun House. Um, it looks nice and it sounds nice and it's great just in in short bursts as a kind of quick puzzle game. You know, just just a bit of a change, and I wasn't expecting much out of it, but yeah, it's, it's pretty good. And as far as Simpsons games go for the eight and sixteen bit generations, um, it's a decent game. Okay, now I have something um, that I think is quite interesting. Um, it's Eternal Champions on the Sega Mega Drive. Now, what makes this game interesting to me and stand out is the fact that this most fighting games um, of the time were based on arcade games. You know, your Street Fighters, of course, your Mortal Kombat's. Um, but this was a game designed from the ground up by Sega, um, basically just to, to be on their home consoles, to be on the Mega Drive. There was a sequel later on on the, um, the Mega CD, but obviously this was built from the ground up just to just to be on the Sega Mega Drive. And like I say, I mean, for fighters of the time, that's that's quite different. A lot of them were just arcade ports. Yeah, so like I say, Sega developed this game. Um, it came out in 1994, and they put a lot of work into this game, you can tell. Fighting games at the time were, were a massive thing, and I think Sega wanted to, to kind of give with this epic kind of fighting game. And to a certain extent, they did succeed and um, the game as far as its story goes is very deep and very involved and um, there's a lot of characters there basically what the, the plot is that um all characters from you know different um eras of time you know different time periods have all been brought together and some might be the greatest soldiers fighters and sorcerers of of you know the time period that they come from and they're kind of thrust into this kind of um this kind of combat situation, you know, like a, a tournament, if you will, um, very much like Mortal Kombat and things. But I think what sets this game aside is the story in this game is very, very deep. Sega put a lot of work into the story and that didn't happen with fighting games back then. You know, you might get like um, a short paragraph of text in the manual explaining who the person was and what country they came from. And you kind of get an idea of like that, that personality and where their loyalties lie, but there wasn't much depth to the character. And Sega really tried to push this game as far as like story goes and things. Um, I mean, in the box, it actually comes with a manual. Um, in the manual, it's got, God, I mean, it's got like a comic. I mean, it just goes on and there's just, there's so much like detail about each, um, you know, individual fighter and the story behind them and things like that. And I just find it really, really interesting. Now, as far as the game goes, it's it's not the greatest fighting game. It plays very much like a kind of street fighter, you know, yeah, it's set up for the kind of six button and stick um, arcade experience. Um, and it just, it, it works fairly well, but it's nothing really special. Um, it's a case of the, the story behind the game being a lot more interesting than the actual game itself. Now, I'll not say it's a bad game. It's a, it's a very competent fighting game, um, but it's, it's, it's flawed in certain aspects. Um, I'll say good things about it first. I mean, the game looks absolutely amazing. Um, the backgrounds and the, like, the character designs are fantastic. The music is brilliant as well. You know, you can see Sega put a lot of work into this and they did have high hopes for it, but it kind of lets itself down. Um, in the single player mode, it gets very difficult. The the enemy AI just starts spamming. Um, you know, it's it's 
you know distance attacks and um, you kind of get in there and it, it's just very difficult and what you end up doing is you just end up spamming the same attacks as well and it doesn't become like tactical it just becomes like a bit of a button basher and uh, just a bit of luck as well so you don't feel like you've achieved something but in two player it's actually you know it's it's really fun Another thing as well, the game kind of borrows a lot. I mean, I've mentioned it from your Street Fighters and your Mortal Kombat, which is kind of understandable because at the time, I mean, those were, you know, the, those were the bar set as that was, you know, the kind of level that other fighting games wanted to get to. Um, so it kind of, it, it steals tropes, you know, like um, finishing moves and things like that. But I mean, ultimately, it's a, it's a pretty fun game, but it's more fun in multiplayer. And yeah, it's like I say, it's more of a case of the story behind the game being more interesting than the actual game itself. But as far as um, the look of the game, it looks brilliant. And as far as the development of the story and the characters, it's really interesting from, from that standpoint. Like, so yeah, that's Eternal Champions on the Sega Mega Drive. Right then, that's pretty much it. Three random games and yeah, we got through them pretty well. So I'll just leave you like I always do and just say thank you very much for watching people and hopefully I'll catch you next time. Bye.